Is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Already being flooded with feedback for AW and NXT last night. And both shows were excellent. Jurassic Express, FTR, and a non-title match. Thought that was great. Kazarian Hangman Page. Thought that was great. MGF versus Sean Dean was just a squash, but he cut a great promo. Jericho and Hager versus Private Party was a, a good match. Thunder Rosa, Ivelisse, very good match. At the main event, which was Best Friends versus Proud and Powerful in a parking lot brawl. It's one of those matches where Dave reviews it and says, it's one of the greatest street fights I've ever seen. And at first, you're kind of taken aback by that. But then you start thinking about street fights. And when you start thinking back, what was a better street fight than that? Actually, it was one of the best street fights I've ever seen. NXT, Io Shirai, Shotzi, Blackheart, non-title. That was a great match. We had Kushida, Austin Theory, which was a lot of fun. Fashion Police, Imperium, another great match. And the main event of the show, which was Damian Priest, Timothy Thatcher. Also an excellent match. So much good wrestling last night. I mean, the only thing on either show that was, like, mind-blowing to me was everything they're doing with Drake Maverick. I mean, he's supposed to be a babyface, and he is the biggest geek. And you can see where the storyline is going. Like, ultimately, he is going to team up with Killian Dane. But, man, the journey to get there, it's like, look at this guy. I'm supposed to feel sympathy for this guy, and I love Drake Maverick. But his character, dear God almighty. So, lots of great wrestling, lots of great promos. we got a lot of big matches coming up for the next couple of weeks, including a women's battle royal to determine the women's title match at TakeOver in like three weeks. I mean, we're just, boom, rushing to this TakeOver. And then, of course, the men will be doing something very similar to Aztec Warfare. It's a gauntlet match, but it's like Royal Rumble with pinfalls and submissions. The winner of that match is going to get a shot at at Finn Balor. Mike, what did you think of these shows? You know, I don't know how great any of the matches were, but it that doesn't really matter to me. It was just a good night of wrestling, and I hope like next Like eight week... of them were great, if you must know. <laughs> so, well, hey, you know, everybody can judge it on their scale, but they were just two great TV shows to keep things moving, and I hope both of them are rewarded next week. I know the number, obviously, we're going to be talking about it tomorrow and on Friday when that number gets released. We'll be into battling back and forth, and everybody else will be about the number, but I hope... Come next week, both shows are actually rewarded with increased viewership because they did a good job moving things uh, along uh, on both shows. I wasn't sure what to think when Shotzi challenged Io, but she really kind of held up to her end of the deal, although it's hard not to look good against Io Shirai. She's the best women's wrestler in the world, arguably. If she's not, she's in the top you know, three. Uh, she's just absolutely fantastic, and I thought that came across really well, and I think Shotzi's stock went up. Uh, introducing Tommaso Ciampa back into the mix and now angling a Kyle O'Reilly possibly being on the babyface side of the ledger. I see we have the divide that I was kind of hoping for in some ways when it comes to the undisputed era where Adam Cole's got his thing going on. It looks like Kyle O'Reilly's got his. And then, of course, we saw Killian Dane and, and Roderick Strong, or the deal with Killian Dane and Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish and Drake Maverick, which was on both shows by far the weakest thing, as you mentioned, incredibly stupid, incredibly dumb. Not all that outside the realm for something in pro wrestling. We've had dumb baby faces trying to, to have a, a tag team partner that keeps pushing them away. But, you know, that small thing out of the way, mostly everything else I thought was really well done, including Jungle Boy with FTR. FTR is such a great team. They really, really are. And they're such a welcome change of pace, you know, in AEW with their style and everything. And there was really good action in this match. Lucha Boy, in some ways, I think there's a, a law of diminishing returns with him. But Jungle Boy, that was as close, I think, in some ways as you can get to Ricky Morton. You know, the, and them selling against the Midnight Express and, and the, the, the Andersons and the Koloffs, like that's as close as you can get with what they were doing with jungle boy that's what it felt like last night and 
he's he's awesome and i you know he's just going to continue to get better and fill out they didn't mention that too they made sure to to point out how good jungle boy has gotten and fdr gave him everything you know you talked about it last night with dave a lot of near falls and everything but just great and there were some times in the match where they did some things that were a little bit wonky but you can see where the inspiration came from and you could see what the intention was even though they weren't the smoothest double teams in the world or they weren't the smoothest referee distraction spots you can see where they were rooted in you know 80s style it's just that the the midnight express worked with the fantastics for years before everybody saw them on a national stage same thing with the rock and roll in the midnights but you can see where that kind of you know that that kind of base of the match was set and I thought that was a hell of a way to start their show. So I thought that throwing the money, you know, I think the down point for AEW, and I know some people loved it, I think, you know, pulling the curtain back literally and having the Young Bucks throw the money, you know, after super kicking the referee, I thought that was a little cornball with, with Tony Khan. But, I mean, if that was the worst part of the show, uh, you know, you had a pretty good night, and, and both sides did.